Leadership Talk, Foundational Documents, Policies, and Procedures. Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development industry leadership staff provide free webinars on building the organizational capacity within the agriculture sector, which results in high-performing organizations. This content is designed for informational purposes only. This information is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice. Organizations should consult their professional advisors related to specific situations. Let us start with definitions. What is a policy? Policies are the rules, expectations, and guidelines for future actions. The Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food, and Rural Affairs fact sheet developing policies and procedures for volunteer organizations simply states that policies are written statements that tell people what to do. What is a procedure? Procedures clarify how something is done, steps to follow, and who is responsible. Setting up a policy serves well for short-term reasons to address something specific. Policies provide an easy avenue to make changes. If the content was included in the Constitution, there would be a process to follow when change is desired. It could be a 30 days meeting notice with identified proposed wording changes or voting requirements to carry a motion that may involve more people. Commonly, we see policies and procedures in use for repetitive activities, discussions, and tasks, or for risk reasons. Will any of you admit to having sat through a meeting thinking to yourself, we talked about this the last four meetings. Why are we wasting time on this? I think many of us have done so. If your board is continually discussing mileage reimbursement, as an example, your board may need a policy that clearly states, Organization XYZ will reimburse out-of-pocket expenses for actions related to Organization XYZ business, including mileage at the rate per kilometer as determined by the board. There's no doubt that there is efficiency in using a policy that concludes the reimbursement of mileage discussion until it no longer serves the organization well. An example of a risk reduction policy is that two authorized signatures are required on both checks and matching invoices for all operational expenses. This will add to the level of checks and balances. No one person can maintain control of spending. Checks should not be signed in advance if honoring the policy that verification that amounts are indeed correct and directed to authorized activities of the board. Who here heard recently about the PharmaCare information in the media? Who knows which community center was victimized $292,000, the least, at least the amount known for the 15-month sentencing of the bookkeeper? Both of these could have been prevented with the use of policies or procedures. In cases where your organization has paid staff, volunteers, and board members, anyone can suggest a policy or procedure, but only the board has authority to approve policies. If your organization or association has been trusting your CEO or executive director to establish or approve policies, you will want to address this risk. But how does a policy become official? As in the example using the policy on mileage, a motion would be made, seconded, discussed, and voted upon during a legally convened meeting with quorum. As per the organization's constitution, the motion would be carried or defeated based on the results of the vote. It is fundamental that board policies are recorded in meeting minutes and then transcribed into a policy manual. It is easy for them to be forgotten and possibly not identified to new board members, staff, or volunteers. Thinking of this on a risk management front, where will the policy and procedure document be stored? How will it be distributed? For some organizations, they will have a website with a members-only section. That is an ideal location. Others may send an electronic copy, and some organizations may provide a paper copy. Regardless of the option chosen, it is fundamental that everyone in the organization adhere to all policies, so it must be clear how everyone will know where to obtain them. It is imperative to include policies and procedures in an orientation package so new board members understand the policies and procedures and how business is conducted in the organization. Everyone needs to know. Some organizations require that staff and board members sign that they have read and understood established policies. How will this be handled? What will the procedures be? Think in terms of risk reduction. There is no one manual format. 
It is fundamental that everyone in the organization adheres to policy, so think in terms of function. Make it easy to navigate, simple to use, appealing, and easy to read. You can use white space, bullets, or numbered lists to facilitate that. Each policy should have a reference, including the original meeting date and motion. Today, electronic options will make it easy for it to be searchable. Providing a rationale will give context to why it was formed and other background information. When thinking risk and use, keep in mind the broad audience who will likely reference the materials. Use plain language, correct spelling, grammar, and punctuation. English may not be the first language of your newest board member. It is important to spell out acronyms, as not everyone may know what letters stand for now or in the future. How many MBAs do you know in the agriculture industry? Manitoba Beekeepers Association and Manitoba Bison Association are two examples. How will it stand up in court if an acronym contained within a policy can be interpreted more than one way? Legally, it is important to keep a copy of all versions of a respective policy. Litigation may involve a former version of a policy. If prepared in an electronic format, the strikethrough feature will make it easy to know that a version is in place. Personally, I am partial to putting the current version at the front, followed by the former version. Policies relevance will change. It is important to review policies and procedures periodically. Often we think, we just worked on these, they must be up to date. As we all know, time passes quickly. There could be an angle not included. Let us look at one suggested revision. I move that policy B2 be edited to include volunteers. The rationale behind this is that the current policy states board members and paid staff. Volunteers are expected to adhere to the policy as well. What risk might you and fellow board members be subjected to should a volunteer not act in accordance to the desires of the board? The motion re would require a seconder, discussion, and a vote would take place, which would carry or defeat the motion. I firmly believe that you should make reviews manageable. A couple ways of doing this are the following. You could review one or two policies per meeting. This is a great way to keep everyone informed and verify to legal counsel that your organization prioritizes education and updating. You can divvy them up amongst board members. Have each member take one policy or category to review. Or you can set a date to address the review as suggested in the template seen earlier. Another useful tip is to include and reference the policies and procedures adopted during a year in the organization's annual report. For example, if an organization adopted a whistleblower policy and a confidentiality po policy in 2019, they may wish to reference these policies in their annual report. I'm not here to tell you and your organization about what your policy should be. Rather, I want you and your fellow board members to approach it with an eye of avoiding risk. Think in terms of what is risky, timely, or what the trends are. Historically, we often saw a code of conduct or confidentiality policies in use. There is no shortage of sample policies related to finances and investment planning, but what is concerning today? Social media. A policy outlines what type of communication about an organization may be shared via a social media platform. Electronic co correspondence use and retention. Privacy. FIPA, the Freedom of Information and Protection Act, will define what public bodies are to do. How will your organization define personal information and protect it? Harassment, especially important if your organization has paid staff. Ethical fundraising, organizational credit card use. Remember, setting policy for repetitive discussions will add efficiency. The top reasons to set policies and procedures are as follows. They establish a standard for how to do things. Once policies and procedures are created and communicated to members of the board, staff, and volunteers, they provide clear expectations. They provide valuable orientation and training for volunteers, members, and staff. Responsibilities and limitations will be defined. They achieve continuity during the life of the organization, making sure important information on how to do things is not lost when an employee or board member leaves an organization. They promote fair and equitable treatment of others, which may reduce conflict and may attract members to your organization. They help your organization mitigate risks and provide a mechanism where the board can delegate authority and maintain control. They demonstrate credibility to the public and members and show you've complied with applicable legislation. 
Time can also be saved when not repeating discussions on a specific topic or discussing issues created when expectations were not clearly defined. Other links can be found on Manitoba's industry leadership page. You can direct any questions to leadership at gov.mb.ca. Make time to visit our Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development Industry Leadership webpage at www.gov.mb.ca slash agriculture. There you will find a number of resources including fact sheets and worksheets, templates and guidebooks that will help you strengthen your organization. You will also find contact information for rural leadership specialists who are available to work with your ag organization. The website contains a wealth of information related to starting an organization, leading an organization, developing a strategic plan, being a board member, board operations, dissolving an organization, and much more. The resources section also contains a number of tools and links that you will find helpful. Please join the conversation with Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development by subscribing to our newsletter, visiting our website, calling our general inquiries line, viewing our videos on YouTube, or following us on Twitter.